welcome to the next lecture of random process in this lecture we will continue our discussion regarding the uh, notion of ensemble and if you recall yesterday let me summarize it again you have already done a random variable right random variable you denote them usually with capital letters like x y z okay you also know their definition they are a mapping or they are function from sample space to real numbers okay now if this random variable in addition to being a random quantity if it is function of time also okay like x of t as an example which we did uh, yesterday or in previous lecture x of t is equal to a cosine of omega c t plus this capital theta so this capital theta here this is what we assume is a random variable okay it is a phase it is a random phase and its distribution is such that it is uniformly distributed uniformly distributed between suppose 0 and 2 pi okay then we realized that for for all t okay for every time instant suppose you can take time instant t1 t2 up to tn we have corresponding the x of t1 x of t2 you know x of tn so they are all random variables they are all random variables that is one thing the other thing is that for some you know particular sample point particular sample point suppose this theta is equal to some small theta then for every such sample point this x of t you know i will now write it as x small x of t because it is now taking a particular value a cos omega c t plus theta now this is function of time okay uh, so in in general a random process is function of sample point as well as time okay uh, now we yesterday also discussed about suppose if you take these so called n samples x of t1 x of t2 x of t3 one way to characterize them is to define their joint distribution okay uh, let's let's talk of joint cumulative distribution function which you might have done in your probability course otherwise so what what does it mean we can ask a question like this what is the probability that this random process at time t1 takes some value up to x1 and at time t2 it takes some value less than or equal to x2 so on so forth at time tn it takes value less than or equal to xn so this by definition as by notation we write it as like this uh, let me write x1 instead of x of t1 x2 xn okay now if you see for continuous distribution or uh, continuous random process sorry and that too which is defined in continuous time you can see that we need very you know infinite number of time instants to define then i uh, discussed just in the previous lecture i also discussed the possibility of you know can we have some simple random processes okay now uh, one of the examples i gave you you know in, in fact the example which i have shown you uh, x of t is equal to a cos omega c t plus capital theta you know with you know i demonstrated yesterday that its mean is zero but this may not be the case always okay let me give an example suppose we have x of t is equal to log of so suppose 1 plus uh, 2t plus you know y where y is some random variable now if you see this particular process it mm, will not have mean zero okay it's very complicated function so for every time interval for every t there will be different mean 
so in general actually in general uh, we can have for a process x of t this mean in general will be function of t i will write mu of t okay but there is there uh, we will consider a class of random processes and in fact in communication system uh, that type of random process is more prevalent wherein this mean is constant it is not function of time not function of time okay that is okay now if you go back to again the concepts of basic random variables you have several fundamental quantities which quantify a random variable one of them is mean and the other is variance okay that is for single random variable you know that so mean we define like this for continuous it is like x px of x dx and variance you know it is expected value of x minus mean square right now if you talk of two random variables okay suppose you have two random variables x and y so one way to characterize them is you know we can define joint distribution as i mentioned in previous lecture also suppose joint cdf fxy of xy how will we define probability x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y this is one way to you know quantify it but is there anything any single number which will tell us story about relationship i want some uh, notion of relation relation between x and y okay so there are several ways one one of the ways is it's called covariance what covariance says is you look at differential of variance first of all how do we compute variance what we do is we subtract mean from the random variable and then square it now if you have two random variables i will subtract mean from each so x minus expected value of x which is mean of x multiply it with y minus mean of y and now you see x is random variable y is random variable this product is also random variable then i will take expected value of this whole thing okay to make it more simple if you denote by mean of x by mu x and mean of y by mu y so we can write it as expected value of x minus mu x y minus mu y so this is defined to be covariance of x and y and there is one more uh, notion that's called cross correlation cross correlation that is simply you take the product of x and y and then you take its expected value okay in fact you know we have a basic result if x and y are not depending on each other they are independent then definitely they satisfy this property that expected value of xy will be called expected value of x and expected value of y okay so this is how we define the cross correlation now coming back to random process coming back to random process so in random process we have a single process okay but uh, at every point of time suppose x of t1 x of t2 so on so forth we have these random variables right so we can define a similar notion of cross correlation for this random process also that means let me take the value of random process at time t1 and let me take the value of random process at time t2 okay and let me take the expected value 
you know the notation as you might have seen the statistics also we we have a notation like x bar for expected value or also we write it as mu x some books write as mx okay it is one and the same thing so in in the book of bp lati you will see they will write it like this x of t1 x of t2 whole bar that means the same thing okay then this is also a notion notion of correlation how much x1 at time t1 is correlated with x at time t okay but this correlation is about a same process x of t we are not talking of two processes hence it has a name first of all the notation we denote it by r x of t1 t2 and i will write here this this definition and it is called auto correlation function auto correlation function auto correlation function of x of t okay